What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to Grim. Today we are meeting these two guys that absolutely love collecting the most boring, mundane stuff ever, which is appliances. Keep watching this because this is one of the weirdest collections of things that I have ever seen. Like, I legit don't get what draws people to these, but, you know, to each their own, I guess. That's right, though. These two spend their whole lives and all of their money collecting old vacuums and dishwashers and blenders and everything in between, which is a nightmare for anyone like me who hates the thought of this stuff because it just personally reminds me that I have chores that I need to do to keep my apartment clean and I really don't want to do them so instead I'm gonna make this video these tasks are anything but a chore that's because they share a common obsession with vintage appliances Okay, I want to know how this even gets brought up in the first place and what the odds are of you meeting someone with this exact same obsession. You know, it's probably a big part of their lives and they might have met on a forum or something on the internet where vintage appliance nerds can geek out over 1950s dishwashers. But for some reason, the thought of them just running into each other at a bar or something and being like, oh yeah, and I guess I do have this kind of weird thing where I like collecting vintage appliances. Oh. No way! Me too! That's crazy! Like, that's just hilarious to me. If they actually met by chance and both shared this super obscure obsession, then that's destiny right there. These two were fated to be together and have the world's best vintage appliance collection ever. If we're gonna look for a room in the house where there's absolutely no appliances, you're not gonna find one. We have probably 15 mix masters. Maybe eight regular blenders. Okay, but why? Is this like super high-end sneaker collecting where they just have the normal shoe that isn't enough, you know? You have to have one of every colorway. <laughs> Those blenders to them are like Jordans, bro. Like the actual dead stock ones from the 80s that have been untouched are fire and worth tons. So they just collect them and display them on a shelf for the world to see. I bet they don't even ever use this stuff, to be honest. They probably don't want any of them to break or degrade in quality from using them. Fred loves toasters. He loves picking up toasters. Sometimes I'm like, oh no, another toaster, but it makes him happy, so it makes me happy. Wow, these two are definitely passionate about this stuff. I mean, 300 vacuums? I hate vacuums. Like, bro, you can find me with one in my apartment and that's it. Side note, I should find these dudes and see if they want to offer on my vacuum. I got it from my grandpa and it's legit like 70 years old, I think. It's the clunkiest vacuum I've ever seen, but it kind of goes hard, to be honest. Like, I don't mind using it. You know, you don't have to pass over the same spot too often. It just picks up everything right away. Who knows, maybe that's a grail vacuum for them and they don't have it in their collection yet. <laughs> I can make big bucks off these dudes. It's undeniable that I have a thing for vacuum cleaners. It's the motor revving up, it's the bag inflating, it's unwinding a cord, plugging it in. It's the whole process of, of vacuuming. Okay, bro. Look, I'm not even going to go there, but you got to chill with that phrasing. <laughs> uh, it sounds like this man wants to date his vacuum cleaners. I mean, I wouldn't think otherwise. He legit has 300 of them. And as I always say, look, you don't go collecting 300 of anything unless you have a deep, deep appreciation for them. Like this man legit loves vacuums. So uh, good for him, I guess, for being rich enough to afford 300 of them. Look, if each of those were Dyson vacuums, that would probably cost a million dollars. Like those things are like the Apple products of the home appliance world. Trust me, super overpriced, man. <laughs> Isn't it so crazy to think how our brains work? Look, something that brings me so much dissatisfaction and anger like vacuuming does is something I never want to do, and every time I have to, I just want it to be over with as quickly as possible. Whereas, it's like a treat for this guy and a whole event, and it's just hilarious how our brains are wired pretty much opposite when it comes to this one thing. I guess people can find enjoyment out of truly anything, but I wish I had this dude as a roommate so I didn't have to clean. I mean, he would just do it and have a grand old time while I kick back and enjoy my games. <laughs> and also, we like to be able to use our things. Our things are not just props. I mean, we'll take a mixer off the shelf and make a cake and next week we'll take a different mixer down. Ah, so they do actually use this stuff. That's good at least. Maybe because, you know, I mean, a lot of this stuff would be useful to be able to use. It's not like they're actually going to collect this antique ones and then just buy modern appliances for daily use. Even though it might be easier, these dudes are really about this lifestyle. Look, their house is pretty cool though. It's definitely retro and the color scheme with all these pastel colors is kind of satisfying. So, you know, I could definitely see this being posted to one of those vibe accounts on Instagram where they just post super aesthetic stuff, you know, maybe that's part of it for them as well. I would say, say we're, obsessed. we're obsessed, but obsessed in a, in, in a, good, in a good, good, in a positive way. Look at these nice suds. Okay, this makes me really uneasy. <laughs> Look, uh, I have a feeling there's something beyond simple, you know, adoration, if that's a word, of these appliances. I don't think I've ever seen a washing machine and been like, 
Wow, I love those suds. This is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> oh, side note, this dude's obsession is with washing machines, unlike the vacuum guy. And he has literally 28 of the most rare ones ever from back in the day stuffed in their basement. Seriously, he walks down and turns on the light all dramatically and just sits there in astonishment looking at this collection in front of him. I say this in every collection type video, but I truly get jealous when I see people like this, man. I mean, I wish I was nearly as passionate about anything as these two are about these appliances. I don't think I've ever looked at something I own with that much awe, as if I was straight up proud of owning it. Since he started accumulating washers, Robert has never owned or used a washing machine made after 1965. Now that is a whole level of bougie I hope I don't ever achieve. <laughs> this man has a set year deadline that he will not go past when it comes to having his clothes washed, and apparently he has never even had his clothes washed in anything made after the 60s. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of cool to see how these different ones work, and I bet the technology was a lot different since we didn't have as many machines, you know, and we didn't know how to make things efficiently, but I wonder if it's at a level where he would notice like someone should prank him and, and see if it's even a thing and wash a couple of his clothes in a modern washer. He'll probably be able to sense it in the fabric right away like these were not covered in my favorite suds, I can tell. Throw these clothes away, they have been tainted by a modern terrible washing machine. I'm disgusted. The machines from the mid 1950s would be the sexiest machines with the most chrome, the most lighted dials. Okay, you know what? I said I expect something extra is going on here that I don't really want to get into, and yeah, that's just further proof right there. If someone ever explains a washing machine as being sexy ever again, I might yak, bro. That is not the word I would use to describe them personally. The vintage style and lights are cool. I get him on that. Like, it's very satisfying to see how retro it is, but I would not in any world say that they are sexy. <laughs> Miss me with that, my dude. Over the past 15 years, they've spent an estimated $40,000 on their washing machines. 40 racks. How does TLC find these hyper-rich people that just have all this spare money to be going towards their obsessions like this? How do you just have a sports car worth of laundry equipment in your basement just chilling there? Look, I know this is their favorite thing in the world, but that is insane to me. I wish I had 40k to invest in whatever I wanted or whatever hobby I enjoyed. Trust me, I could blow that real quick with some camera equipment or car parts, believe me on that. Hey, you guys made it pretty far into this video, so real quick, I'm going to ask you to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell in the next five seconds. And if you're quick enough, I'm going to reward you with your very own vintage washing machine. Your water bill will go up like three times because these things are super non-efficient. But I mean, you can hear the cool sounds and enjoy the nice suds, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, on with the rest of the video. To these two collectors, washers aren't simply machines. They've assigned each one its own gender. Yep, these might be real people to these guys. Like, that might legit be how far this obsession has gone. Look, if I'm around someone and they tell me that they have assigned a gender to their washing machine, I'm dipping, bruh. Like, I'm certain there might be someone being held captive in their basement alongside those machines. Seriously, that is some weird psycho stuff right there. I don't want anything to do with that. These were the very first models that these companies produced, and these are the only two left known in the world to exist. Okay, now that's a flex. If you legit have the only models in the world that exist, you are the cream of the crop when it comes to these types of collections. Now, I'm not really sure how competitive the vintage appliance collection game might be, but if we're talking purely insane pieces and grail items, this might be the tippity top. That's like owning sample shoes or something. Like, I'm surprised the brands themselves aren't trying to reach out to him and contact him in order to have them in their headquarters or something. You know, usually car brands will do that. If people find vintage models that are rare, they will pay a hefty some as well for some of them too but i bet they could offer him a million dollars and he would not take it that's how much he's attached to these things robert has studied washers so obsessively he can recreate the sounds of an entire wash cycle okay bro that's not studying the wash cycle that's legit just making noises that somehow closely sound like a wash cycle <laughs> tlc what are you doing quit gassing this man up acting like his impressions are good i bet i could do a closer impression and i've never seen one of these in person seriously what washing machine have you ever seen that goes 
<laughs> but for real, I've kind of been clowning on these two, but it is cool once again that these guys are passionate about this. And it sounds like they might have one of the best collections on the planet, if not the best collection. So let me know if you are in on this scene and can correct me on that. You know, I'm sure there might be some rich billionaire in Dubai or something that has an even better collection, but who knows? I'm sure this is hard to top, especially with his two one of one vintage washing machines. That is a huge flex right there. So this was a very peculiar video, but guys, let me know what you thought down in the comments and do you agree that this is a little strange and this might be a bit more than an innocent obsession for these two right like I definitely get that vibe let me know down in the comments and as always I'll see you guys in the next video until then peace out